Ignacio Puig pinch hitting. And he will hit a ground ball towards short. Russell goes to Baez one. Over to first. The Cubs are going to the World Series. The Cubs win the pennant. It was a moment 71 years in the making. The Chicago Cubs are lovable losers no more. They are going to the World Series to face the Cleveland Indians. And one team will see its long, painful championship drought come to a crashing end. Meanwhile, could the Cubs be getting their biggest bat back in time for the Fall Classic? Kyle Schwarber getting some swings in down in the Arizona Fall League, but would playing him after six months off be a mistake? Welcome into Sports Talk Live, presented by the Chevy Silverado. Hope you had a great weekend, ready for a great week. I'm David Kaplan. Panel for today's show. He is the star now at US 99 morning show <laughs> alongside Dougie Stiles. He's Justin Roman. Thank you for being here, my Thank man. Thank you for having me. We've got the stars of the Carmen and Yurko <laughs> show at ESPN 1000, Carmen DeFalco and John uh, Yurkovich, the former NFL standout. <laughs> All right. The Cubs are in the World Series. Your guys' thoughts on what you saw this weekend. It was insane. It was emotional. Uh, it was, forget the X's and O's, the emotions were the thing that drew me to it, Carm. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm i not a Cub fan, so I haven't had to suffer. I didn't know that. I oh. haven't had to suffer. <laughs> I, I've never... I've never cried when my team has won like that. And I don't know if there's something wrong with me or if it's just not being a Cub fan and not having to wait you. 71 years just to see him get back there. Or most people waiting their entire lives to. But you, you're a Sox fan. Yeah, but I mean, that, I, I never cried. I don't know. I was, uh, you get a little taken aback by all the emotion. Like, it's wow, the black it's, heart to go along with the black Sox. That's what I it guess. Is. I don't know what it is. I've never cried. I, but I know this. They're, they're awfully good. That I do know. And. P I mean, this is a moment that's for has been you know decades in the making. So I get that people are going to be emotional and kind of over the top and and how they're going to react because the whole world's been waiting for this. It was really a nice three game run, down two to one, and, and to come back and you win game four, then game five, and then doing it against Kershaw, mm -hmm. the way Kershaw had handled you yep. before. You come back, you do it against Kershaw, you get to him early, so the celebration really starts in the first. Mm -hmm. and the anxiety and the eagerness and, and all of it starts to build up into the crescendo in the ninth inning when you get the double play and you get out of it all. Then the celebration begins. So I'm the opposite. I did cry. I was there at Wrigley oh. on Saturday with my dad, you know, longtime Cub fan, and just the emotion of, like, yeah, like, nobody's really seen this. This is something that, like, not many people were alive to have seen this. I'm with my dad, that double play, and I, just, I couldn't control myself. Tears. I'm a grown man. Tears wow. are coming down my eyes. Um, it was the greatest night of my entire life. I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not lying. It was the best night of my life. And it's not even a championship. I mean, it's a league championship, but, it, but it's, know, it's what's going to happen it's, if they win the World Series? Yeah, and I was thinking that, too. Like, how could it, like, the emotions in that, in that stadium were amazing, and the tears and, and all that, but it could get better with four more wins. But, like, if you go to the NHL Stanley Cup final, it's not like winning a pennant, the NBA final. Right. You win yeah. a pennant. Right. There's I, yeah. something There's, about it. Yeah. Just because it's baseball and it's historic and, yeah, they've well, I mean, been playing I'm, it for so long. So there is something I'm standing uh, on the more field. important about winning the pennant. And my love for baseball, that's my favorite sport. Mm -hmm. My late father gave me that love, and I looked up, I go, hey, Dad, we're going to the World Series. And it's like an emotional moment. Yeah. You look in the stands, and there are people holding up signs of dearly departed. No. <laughs> yeah. I lost my mom. I lost my dad, you yeah. know, whatever the date. We're going to the World Series. Yeah. It was crazy. Crazy. Yeah, it, it's exciting. I, anybody, when you win the World Series, if they win it in Game Five at home that's uh, on oh. Sunday night, crazy. I'm, that's I'm praying for that. Win. I want it really so bad. I, and so I hope great. it happens for all Cubs I'll fans take out it wherever there. Wherever it comes, you oh, just yeah. win. Get ready to have all the handkerchiefs ready because you're going to need them that night because mm. then there will be tears. You're going to love this. I'm bringing my dad and my two-year-old son on Friday for the first World oh. Series game at Wrigley Field. My, my son will be on my lap, my dad next to me, three generations of Romans at Wrigley Field for a World <laughs> Series game. Like that is, I never thought that it was even possible, but Friday is going to happen. Yeah, it, it, it was sick. And I get <laughs> it. You're a Sox fan. I got a lot of friends who are Sox fans, but I've been amazed by the, the Sox fans that I've dealt with, even the guys that I have battled with on Twitter, have been so classy. Yeah, I agree. Where I hope you get to experience what we experience. My brother sends me a text. Hey, man, I'm just happy for you that you might get the chance to experience this because you guys got it in 05. Yeah, yeah, we got we got one, and it seems like a long time ago. <laughs> Does. I mean, why, what am I supposed to say to Cub fans? I, you know, why not just try to be classy about it? Not a lot you could say. I mean, my team stinks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 
Is that the part Cubs of it? Are in the World Series. I mean, what, uh, what am I supposed to say? The, be, the all you can do is try to be a mensch about it, and it is what listen, it is. Listen, I, I do have a lot of people in my life that I'm close with that are Cub fans. My mm -hmm. dad's a Cub fan. My youngest brother's a Cub fan. I mean, my grandfather was, you know, he waited Die his whole hard. life, unfortunately, for this, and he never got to see it. So, I mean, I, you know. You get it. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Our Cubs World Series coverage is driven by Lexus, and we drive our Lexus out to Cleveland. ESPNChicago.com's Jesse Rogers joins us from Progressive Field. Jesse, you're there. We're winging our way there a little bit later, but take us inside what the vibe is like around this team. I know they had a late night on Saturday. They partied, but now it's game on, man. 24 hours from now, the World Series is kicking them up. Absolutely. First of all, Cap, that panel you have, great faces for radio, so kudos to you for putting them on TV. That's a wonderful charitable thing you're doing. Anyway, the Cubs are excited about the return. <laughs> the return of Kyle Schwarber. It's happening, folks. One for three today out in Arizona. He's on his way here. All indications are he's going to be activated. I have a feeling he's going to be the DH as soon as tomorrow. A lot of the Cubs can't believe it, yet they can because it is a special person in Kyle Schwarber, mentally strong, a swing every coach or manager would love to have, and he's got great plate discipline. How effective he'll be after nearly six months off, who knows? But I love the storyline as a fan and as a reporter, so they're excited for that little boost of energy for the team. And, of course, uh, the other issue is how the young player is going to deal with, their, with the World Series. They've dealt with a couple uh, high-pressure rounds already of baseball, so that's not really a concern either. Although John Lester calls this moment a little different than the first couple rounds, but it seems like the Cubs are ready for this thing. You also have a real good pitching matchup in Game 1. Corey Kluber, who's won a Cy Young. John Lester. I mean, this is pretty special stuff. It is, and one of the topics today was, of course, the Cleveland Indians run game. Led the league, the American League, in stolen bases. So whether it's Arietta Montero or Lester Ross, it's definitely an issue. It's interesting talking to Chris Bosio about it, though. He doesn't mind so much if they take that extra base because it gives them an open base to work around a little bit. So the Cubs, at times, can turn a negative into a positive. They don't like the matchup at the plate. They can work around that hitter if they have to walk him eventually, even if it's unintentional, get the next guy. So they've spun this in the, in the right way. They've taken it advantage of other teams thinking that they're going to take advantage of John Lester and David Ross. It really hasn't worked all season, and really in the two years that Lester's been here, We'll see what happens starting tomorrow night. You know the Indians are going to challenge them, but can Lester and Ross slow them down? So far, they've proven they can. Jesse, I personally would not start Jason Hayward in any game in this series. I don't care. The guy's pitching underhand. No shot. Use him as a defensive replacement. Work on restructuring the swing in the offseason. I also would not catch Montero. In a seven-game series, it's either David Ross or it's Wilson Contreras. Do you believe Hayward or Montero are getting starts in this series? I do. I do. And I, do, I, I tend to agree with you on the Hayward thing. Maybe not as much on Montero if, if Arietta, in fact, do, does want him. Uh, I, I, but I have a feeling Hayward's going to be in there tomorrow. The fact that they can have a DH, whether it's Schwarber or Contreras or someone else, means they could carry a glove-only guy. And they can always bench him again if he looks terrible tomorrow. He doesn't have to be in there Wednesday. I know you don't have a lot of time to see if a guy can come out of a slump. But I have a feeling, at least in the AL Park here in Cleveland, they are going to start Hayward. Maybe not so much back at Wrigley when the pitcher has to hit again. I do have a feeling that Montero is going to get at least one start. I could be wrong. We'll see how that plays out. I know talking to Montero, he was thinking he might be a DH here. But now Schwarber's in the mix. So there's a lot of things that Madden can do. But uh, you're not far off with Hayward. Uh, he's looked really bad. And everybody from scouts on down has said, man, how can this guy start? We'll see what happens tomorrow. Last one. Is Schwarber taking a pitcher spot on the roster and go with 10 pitchers or 11? And how would you look at that roster shaking out? Anything surprising you? No, I don't think so. Someone suggested to me on Twitter, Matt Caesar over Solaire. It's actually not a bad idea. Caesar's glove and bat and pants have been in the game already, so why not? Uh, I have a feeling that it's says Drizny, like most people are saying, will come off for Schwarber. Uh, the Red Sox in 07 had 11 pitchers. In 04, they had 10 pitchers. Madden's team in 08 had 11 pitchers. So you don't need 12, especially when four up to four games will be here in Cleveland. Less pinch inning. Less, you know, taking out your pitcher, double switching and all that stuff for obvious reasons. So 
Uh, yes, I think it's a pitcher that comes off for Schwarber. And could could Caesar make it over a guy like Soler? You don't like to hit this cold weather. They don't use him on defense. He's probably not going to have a DH spot. It's a possibility, I suppose. Jesse see you in Cleveland tomorrow, buddy. You got it. Safe travels, guys. Right, thanks, Sparky. Here's our Sports Talk Live poll question. Go to csnchicago.com slash vote. Would it be a mistake to put Kyle Schwarber on the World Series roster? You guys can vote as well. How do you all vote? I, I would only I would vote yes if he gets hurt. That's well, the only reason I do. Sure I can. <laughs> Absolutely. If he gets you cannot hurt. Put replace, him on the roster. You can't put, replace him. Put him on the roster. Pre-existing injury precludes being replaced. Put him on the roster. It would be a new injury, first of all that would cause him to go out. It wouldn't be a, the old injury that would cause him to go out. You can go ahead and screw around. You can play games. You can have fun with Kyle Schwarber as long as he stays healthy. It's not a problem. Put him up there. Let him hit. Let him jog to first base because that's all he's going to be able to give you. 75% going to first base. I got no problem. It's safe. Whatever. If he gets hurt, then you made a, a colossal mistake. I mean, I love Kyle Schwarber, but the Arizona Fall League and simulated games are different than the World Series. Yeah, the Corey Kluber. I mean, Corey Kluber. Yeah. So I feel like we already have that offensive uh, bat first guy in Soler. I, personally, I would have DH Soler throughout this uh, American League uh, park. But then again, it's a great story. And if Schwarber comes through with a big bomb, I mean, how could you say that it was the wrong decision? I mean, I guess it depends on what happens. I mean, it, right now to predict, it's hard. I would say no. Don't put him on the roster. Watch him come up tomorrow night in the first at bat and hit <laughs> one, you know, onto true. the concourse. Right. And then everybody says, well, I see, this is why you got Schwarber. He hasn't seen big league pitching, and Roman's right, whatever's happening in the Arizona Fall League does not count, let's mm -hmm. face it. He hasn't seen big league pitching in six months. And are, 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 is everybody just wrapped up in the idea that it's Kyle Schwarber from last year? The chances of Kyle Schwarber from last October being Kyle Schwarber now, I mean, come on. That, that, it's such a reach. Slim and none. It's a, exactly. It's a long shot. He could prove us all wrong and go hit a bomb tonight and hit three of them and they win the World right. Series and we'll look like idiots, I guess. But you're asking me to make a prediction right now. I'm going to say he's going to look bad in just about every at-bat against big league hitting, not having seen it in six months. 79% say it will not be a mistake. Are you just being a Sox fan? Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> what everybody else is. They're speaking that. from their hearts, not <laughs> from I, their they, minds. I, they really, they were 100 and they've won 110 games. They are clearly and have been all season, clearly the best team in baseball. Is it? Are you that desperate to have Kyle Schwerber's bat back in the lineup? Well, if, look, if he gets up there and runs into one. I know. Goes, I guess. Uh, you holy know, it's gonna go. People are going to go nuts. He'd be a great pinch hitter to have on the bench, though. I mean, like, you know, let's think about it. Bottom of the ninth or whatever. You need a lefty, you know, that one at bat. But for DH, and that's, I don't know. It's tough. All right. John Lester has met business this postseason. Check out this stat built by Comcast Business. 14 times in postseason history, a pitcher has started game one of the Division Series, the LCS, and the World Series. John Lester become the first pitcher to do that twice. Here's a list of the most recent pitchers to do it. Of the 14 times that has happened, pitchers team went on to win the World Series eight times. And there you'll see Lester did it with the Red Sox and now doing it with the Chicago Cubs. Uh, he's built for this moment. He is. This is the right guy at the right time. Here. Well, Lester's been a monster this year. This year, Lester was the guy that you expected to be here last year when Arietta took over the role as the ace of the staff. So hopefully he goes out and does what he does. And I don't think anybody's ever really made the commitment to challenge Lester. You know, and Francona might be that guy because he knows what his nuances, his idiosyncrasies are. If I'm him, the first six batters lay down a bunt and they force Lester to go ahead and make a play at first. First six guys lay a bunt down going toward the third base side. Make the commitment to get in the Lester's head. That's getting in his head. And every guy's going on the first pitch. If they get on, every guy is going on the first pitch. The first... I mean, the second and then the third. That's what you got to make the commitment for. That's that's when you mess with his head, not when you dance around first base like a lunatic. I do that think though, I do think Cleveland's going to run though, and not just pretend like the Dodgers. Dodgers really aren't a base running team. No. This team they is. They do all that dancing. Yeah, there's a lot of silliness. This team's got speed and good base runners. Rashi Davis, even though he's 35, his legs are still there. I mean, you know, Kip this can't run. Got the ankle Kip this problem. can't really run. But yeah, I mean, uh, Lindor, Lindor, can. Lindor, Lindor can run, and yep. Ramirez can run, and certainly Rashi Davis can still run. Uh, so I have a feeling they'll probably get going a little bit more, but yeah, he is built for these moments, John Lester. He's a mentally tough dude. I keep thinking people are going to take advantage of that, but with Lester and then Ross is the is the equalizer because Ross with those back picks and yeah. and then Baez with these amazing double plays. I mean, like no one has exploited that that problem. So I mean, the Indians could probably try, but I, I don't cut out Ross to to shut it down. All right, Brian Hoyer's season looks to be over. So now the team gets to welcome back an old face. <laughs> Jay Cutler's been cleared. Should start one week from tonight. But will it matter? Will they be better off losing the games anyway? 
and later much more from Cleveland as the party continues. I still haven't slept since Saturday night. World Series is up next. STL back after this. That was me partying. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Sports Talk Live is presented by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers who know what it takes to be number one. It's all about drive. How's it going? Hi. Today we're going to be comparing the roll form steel bed of the Chevy Silverado to the aluminum bed of this competitor's truck. Awesome. <laughs> Let's see how the aluminum bit of this truck held up. Oh, wow. that's a good size puncture. Your aluminum now, you're gonna go. Ooh. Let's check out the Silverado steel bit. Wow. Yeah, a couple dents. I'd expect more dents. It's truck month. Make a strong decision. Find your tag and get over eleven thousand total value on this Silverado All Star. Wi-Fi that doesn't work for everyone, doesn't work for anyone. You have a lot of devices in your home? Phones, tablet. How does the Wi-Fi handle all your devices? Everything yeah. just slows down. We're gonna do a little internet stress test. A bunch of your extended family has just come over. Seven devices using the same network. Very smooth. No buffering, no slowing down. Who do you think delivers Wi-Fi like this? I'm gonna guess Xfinity. It's Xfinity. Who else wants to jump on the Wi-Fi? Anybody else? Xfinity delivers the fastest in-home Wi-Fi. Get started with Xfinity Internet from Comcast for $19.99 a month for 12 months. Click, call, or visit a store today. My name is Jim Cornelison, and I am the national anthem singer for professional hockey in Chicago. I am in front of millions of people every time I get out on that ice. And the more I've been on camera uh, in the last few years, I noticed, you know, the gall patch coming in. Ultimately, I had to face the truth. I just had less hair up there. Get your own head of thick, full hair with Restore. The procedure is quick, it's comfortable, it's pain-free. There's no cutting, there's no stitching, and there's no linear scar. It's my own hair. It's just moved from the back to the front. I was in in the morning. I was out in the afternoon. Comb it, cut it, style it. It's your hair. You're just one call away from looking and feeling more confident. When I walk out on the ice and I know I'm going to be on that jumbotron, I feel good about how I look. Call Restore today for your free consultation and get a $500 gift card. It may be the first step that changes your life forever. Call 1-800-873-7171 or visit RestoreHair.com. Tonight, your Hawks hit home ice against Calgary, looking to put up a firewall and quickly extinguish the flames. Sound the alarm and gear up for the fight with Chevy Blackhawks pregame live, starting at 7 on CSN. Visit CSNChicago.com for great deals on your favorite team's merchandise. From jerseys and hats to customized shirts and more, get the latest trends for the Bears, Blackhawks, Bulls, Cubs, and Sox at the shop on CSNChicago.com. Blackhawks back on CSN tonight after a shootout win over the Maple Leafs Saturday night. Look to make it two in a row tonight for the Calgary Flames roll into town. Calgary roster with Christopher Stieg, Michael Frolik, and Troy Brower. Blackhawks pregame live starts our coverage at 7. Pat Foley and Eddie Olchek have the call at 7.30. Noted hockey fan John Morosi from Fox Sports joins us now. Johnny, what's your take on Cleveland? It's a base running team. They can really steal bases. And Yurko in here said, if I, I'd take the first six guys and have them all bunt against John Lester. What do you think happens tomorrow night? Well, David, I think we'll see some similar strategy to what we saw from the Dodgers in the last series. But I think in general, the reality is John Lester is very, very tough to hit in the postseason. We've seen it certainly with Boston in 13 and 07, and we're seeing it right now here for the Cubs. Uh, and again, I think it's the, the key thing for Lester is the command of his fastball. We talked about that earlier today, about all the noise, all the pressure, all the scouting reports, the, the multiple looks that teams get against him over the course of a series. He said, listen, when I locate my fastball, it plays just as well in October as it does in June. So I think we'll see the same Lester. We'll see the same defense, that same philosophy. You're right, certainly Ramirez, Lindor, they'll, they'll put a bunt down. I think they look overall as a team that runs the bases very well. Mike Napoli, a very good base runner. But I think, again, the reality is John Lester is very good on the mound. That was true against the Dodgers. I expect it will be true here in game one tomorrow night as well. You're a national analyst. You see these guys all over baseball. How would you compare contrast the Chicago Cubs to Cleveland Indians? 
You know, I still think, David, you look at the big picture here, the Cubs are the best team in the game. They've been the best team in the game since they showed up to spring training. They, they've been that good this year. Uh, we've seen it happen. It's very rare that teams that win 100-plus games win the World Series because it's that hard to be good for seven months in a row. But this team is exceptional. I think it's the deepest team in the game. However, one thing we saw the Indians do very, very well in the ALCS, when they were able to scratch across one or two runs early, then it was Miller and Allen and Shaw, and basically they were unbeatable late in the ballgame. So if we see it, the Indians get the early lead at different times in this series, they're a tough team to come back on because of how good Andrew Miller is. He changes the game, and the interesting thing, Dave, is it's not he changes the game in the ninth inning, he changes it potentially in the sixth. That's what's so unique about what Miller has done for this team. So that, to me, is a really unique aspect of the way the Indians play and why I still think the Cubs are the more talented team. I expect the Cubs to win this series, but the Indians, David, they were countered out by many national analysts, including myself, frankly. At the start of the last series, we all thought, oh, Toronto, look at the rotation. It's a much better ball club. The Indians won that series in five. And so especially with a healthy Trevor Bauer, potentially Danny Salazar in game four, this is going to be an excellent series, one that I believe comes back here to Cleveland for game six and seven. Scott, appreciate the knowledge. See you in Cleveland tomorrow, my man. My pleasure. Enjoy the series, David. Thank you. The best. There he is, John Morosi. Does great work at Fox. All right, let's talk. Jay Cutler cleared, probably at quarterback. He'll ride in on his donkey to save the day <laughs> next Monday night against the Vikings. A burrow. A burrow. Yeah. Exactly right. Alshon Jeffrey's happy. Yes, he is. Yeah. The Bears have a better chance to win with Jay Cutler at quarterback. Who cares? I, I agree. Who cares? I'm just saying, if you want to see good football, there's a better chance of having solid offensive football with Jay Cutler back there. You can't tank in football. This is not baseball. You can't tank. Yes, you can. It's called they, Matt Barkley. They put in effort. They're not going to play Matt Barkley over Jack Cutler. There's no way in the world. You can't look your Bear fans in the eye and do the same thing. You're not going to get the number one pick uh, because Cleveland's not winning a game. They're only awful. one I mean, game ahead of you. Cleveland's they're not awful. They've come close. Cleveland's not winning. Cody Parkey makes one of three Cleveland's field goals. They would already have a win. They're, you're not going to be worse than Cleveland. You're just not. I, you know. So, like, to Yurko's point, I mean, a little, little tough when Cleveland's sitting there with no wins and they have more incentive and they have an easier path now to make sure that they don't have a win. Bears will still end up lot. Why watch the Bears win like six games? They will. <laughs> Just to I mean, which is the worst thing that could happen, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's. I can't winning. believe we're talking about them. They'll have the 11th pick. I mean, they're not winning six games. No, they'll have the 11th pick. Watch him just because it would be so Bears. That's why I'm telling you, you start Matt Barkley. Boy, gonna, you can't you can't call yourself an NFL yeah. franchise and start Matt Barkley. They're going to draft a 200. We want to know by the end of the year if Matt could do something for us. They'll draft a 235-pound nose tackle. That's what they're going to draft for you. I mean, it's it's so tough for me to even focus on anything with the Cubs, but I mean, I think you, you got to start Cutler, and and uh, you know we'll see what he can do. But I mean, this team's it's it's, it's tough to watch, and um, <laughs> it can only go up from here, right? I mean, I, you're, I you know, know. only go up. I wish it was Week 17. That's oh. how bad this Bears year. If it was Week 17, oh. Matt Barkley better be a quarterback. I'd be jumping for joy. It'd be somebody else. It'd be their fifth quarterback by that time. No question. Time for one final time. Out back to wrap up SBL after this. Welcome back to the Mitsubishi Outlander Sport Network, everybody. 20 minutes till sundown. Will they make it? This might be a good time for all your control. There's the decision. Off road we go. With a 2.4-liter engine, they're powering into that final stretch. What a finish. This broadcast was brought to you by the new 2016 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. Make your drive a sport. Max Mazda Mitsubishi's fourth quarter final drive event. 0% APR for 72 to 84 months. Stackable loan rebates topping $1,500. Cash buyers save $5,500 to $7,500 in rebates and discounts. Here's some information. We have the right amount of beer taps. If we had any more, the kegs wouldn't stay fresh. Any fewer? And we might not have that beer you like on tap. The one you can't pronounce, so you just point. We've got all that and more, which makes us pretty confident. We've got that confident look in our eyes. The squinty one with the furrowed brow. Because of the taps.
From outdoor renovations to updates inside your home, Menards is here to help. Get an 11% rebate on everything in the store, including thousands of sale items. Whether it's a fresh coat of paint or a whole new building, you'll save 11% on all of it. So you can finish your latest project and start planning the next big thing. Get building with an 11% rebate on everything, even sale price items, now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Attention females with ovarian cancer. Breaking news. A plaintiff who used a talcum-based powder and died from ovarian cancer has been awarded compensation for damages. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed or died from ovarian cancer and used a talcum-based powder or other talc-based powders, you may be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Act now. Time is limited to file a claim. For a free consultation and free information, call Injury Help Desk. Call 1-800-483-0812. That's 1-800-483-0812. Do you like it? Do you think Cleveland's cool? I mean, I never heard anybody say I'm going to Cleveland on vacation. Mm. What's so good about Cleveland? Well, guess what? We want to go to Cleveland, and we will be there tomorrow. A special hour-long sports talk live at the World Series. We get you set for game one of the fall classic. Remember, tomorrow, sports talk live, live at 5. Your stat of the day, driven by the Chevy Silverado, the fan base will be finally happy two of the three longest championship droughts are on display this year. Cubs drought 107 seasons, 108 years. Only the Arizona Cardinals in the NFL have a longer drought. They won their last NFL title a year before the Tribe won its last title. All right, what happens? I want game five to clinch, but I, I, I say Cubs in six. Indians in seven. Oh, come on, <laughs> man. Sure. Why? Cubs and six. You don't, you don't truly believe it. Uh, no, I do. I think. And you're rooting and for an AL Central foe. And I know. That does kind of suck. Uh, Andrew Miller is the reason why. Indians win. Cubs and six. All right. Yeah. Cubs I, and six. I went Cubs and six as well. Mm. And I think it's right. going to be Brian, fans. Brian that carries the load there. It's Brian that wins the MVP. Really? Yep. How about yeah. the talent on these two teams? The really? young talent on these two yeah. teams. It's insane. Lindor and Russell and Bryant. It's ridiculous. All right. And they can catch you on US 99 every morning. Every single time. morning. So, uh, 530 to 10 a.m. 530 yeah. to 10. You two guys, 9 to noon on ESPN. <laughs> 1, so leave Roman at 9, I always say. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrap. I'll see you guys on the bus. That's a wrap for Sports Talk Live presented by the Chevy Silverado. Remember, subscribe to the Sports Talk Live podcast, csnchicago.com slash podcast. Don't miss an episode. Have a great evening. We'll see you tomorrow from Cleveland at 5 p.m. How's it going? Hi. Today we're going to be comparing the roll form steel bed of the Chevy Silverado to the aluminum bed of this competitor's truck. Awesome. <laughs> Let's see how the aluminum bit of this truck held up. Wow. Ooh, that's, that's a good size puncture. Your aluminum now, you're gonna go. Ooh. Let's check out the Silverado steel bit. Wow. Yeah, a couple dents. I'd expect more dents. It's truck month. Make a strong decision. Find your tag and get over eleven thousand total value on this Silverado All Star. Hi, I'm George Oliphant, host of George the Rescue. Every home has a story, and sometimes there's unexpected surprises. We're the Santino family. We've been in this home for three years now, and life is always an adventure. Sure enough, with all the foot traffic, you're bound to get a few holes in the wall, right? <laughs> so Chess, this has got to be the hole in question, right? Right. Not a problem. I totally see how that could happen. He's coming down the stairs, elbow in the wall, rambunctious kids. I got right. three boys. I was a rambunctious boy myself. But fixing it's not going to be a problem. With 3M Large Hole Repair, I can patch it up, and it'll be as good as new. Sounds good. 3M has created the perfect all-in-one large hole repair kit to make your spaces look and feel as good as new. First, remove all the debris from inside and outside the hole. Then you sand the edge of the hole and remove any loose paper. Remove the adhesive liner and center the backer plate inside the hole. Secure it with a firm pull for 30 seconds. Apply additional pressure on the back of the tape line. Push the strap back through the hole and apply the mesh tape over it to hold the compound. 3M's innovative behind-the-wall support system helps provide a nearly invisible repair. This compound is reinforced with fibers that bond the wall for added strength. No shrinking, no sagging, no cracking, one application. Spread the compound and slightly overfill the hole with your knife. Use slow, even strokes to smooth the compound for a quality finish. When the surface dries, use the 3M sanding sponge to complete the repair. Use a primer sealer and paint away. What do you think? George, it looks great. I love it. It's like it never happened.
It's a pro finish with a simple, easy to use DIY kit. And it's super strong yet light enough that you can also use it in the ceiling. That's great, thank you so much. Accidents happen, but 3M's large hole repair kit gives you the ability to respond, restore, revitalize, and make your home good as new. I'm Jordan Tutu, and you're watching the home for the Chicago Blackhawks, CSN. You're connected to Sportsnet Central, presented by Comcast Business. And he will hit a ground ball towards short. that good evening everyone welcome into sportsnet central presented by comcast business i'm mark shanowski the world series starts tomorrow night in cleveland and the national media got a chance to talk with both managers and most of the players at progressive field this afternoon our drive to a championship is brought to you by lexus the field is ready, complete with World Series logos. No rain in the forecast for Game 1, a little bit chilly in Cleveland. The Indians have not played since finishing off Toronto in the ALCS last Wednesday, but you know they'll be ready to play. Cleveland skipper Terry Francona already has two World Series titles to his credit. As you remember, he managed for Theo Epstein in Boston. Luke Stuckmeyer is part of our Break the Budget crew covering this historic event. Luke joins us now live from Progressive Field. How was that drive, Stucky? It was great, Mark. Uh, this is really surreal. The Cubs and Indians in the World Series. This is what it feels like with the Cubs in the World Series. Chilly and spectacular. The Cubs have now set their starters for games one and two here at Progressive Field in Cleveland. We will get John Lester in game one tomorrow, then Jake Arrieta in game two coming up on Wednesday. So the Cubs will attack Cleveland with the reigning National League Cy Young and the co-MVP of the NLCS. Now Arrieta says the partying is officially over for now. He tweeted out a picture of a World Series baseball today in his hands. It says, looks good, doesn't it? Well, you know what? It sounds pretty good, too. Arietta very confident in his comments. We'll have some of those coming up later in the show. And the real news coming out of Cleveland today, this is crazy. We already have an epic matchup. Now the possibility and likelihood that Kyle Schwarber will be playing in game one as the DH. John Heyman and John Morosi of MLB Network have both tweeted out that right now Schwarber is on a private jet coming to Cleveland and expected to DH we're going to talk to John Heyman in just a bit. Schwarber hasn't played since game three of this season. Maybe the scoreboard guys knew something. Even though they have Ross not catching, they had Schwarber in the DH when they put it up earlier this afternoon. His teammates are simply thrilled at the possibility. I'm excited. I mean, obviously, he's, you know, when he's, you know, playing, it's fun to watch. He's got a lot of power, but um, I don't know. It, it, it's hard. I mean, you don't want to expect it a ton out of him because he's been out for six months but if there's anybody that can come back and do it it's definitely him reports are good um he's going to play again tonight um he's been doing everything he's been swinging the bat he's swinging the bat well he's running really well actually um he's actually done some sliding drills all that kind of stuff to uh just test the whole thing out so we'll wait till he plays tonight and then uh, make an evaluation after that we don't have to have our roster set till tomorrow i guess tomorrow at 10 o'clock uh, but right now he's, he's doing everything well and right, so uh, he's giving us another option to think about. Cubs had their workout earlier, and before that, we had media day here at Progressive Field. Kelly Kroll, our Cubs insider, joins us now. And Kelly, a lot of fun and a lot of confidence from the Cubs. Yeah, quiet confidence as we were talking about. It sounds like the guys are ready to really get things rolling. Uh, certainly nice and chilly, but they like to keep the bats hot here in Cleveland. We talked a little bit about the celebration. And the crazy celebrations have now turned into complete concentration on the Indians and finishing off the job this team set out to do back in February. Of course, ending the 71-year pennant drought was something all of them 
relished in, they're very proud of, but 71 years from Madden Club, as we'll hear from the guys, it's just over half of the goal they've really set out to finish. You know, this says World Series on it. It's crazy. After punching their World Series tickets, the Cubs' crazy celebrations have now turned into complete concentration on the Indians and finishing the job they set out to do back in February. Naturally, ending a 71 year pennant drought is something they're very proud of, they've relished in. But for Madden's Club, 71 years is just over half of the ultimate goal. I was a little surprised at how. Uh, um, how people have responded, you know, in Chicago, like it's it's almost like, uh, you know, they they feel like we've already done something incredible, you know, um, which we realized we had, you know, we hadn't won a league championship series in in 70, 70 years, but you know, we still feel like, man, we got work to do. We celebrated Saturday night and we did a good job of it, um, but then as soon as Sunday rolled around, it was all about getting ready for the Indians and getting locked back in. While many Northsiders will be playing in their first fall classic, game one starter John Lester is looking to capture his third championship. The Cubs ace, who is 3-0 with a sparkling 43 ERA and three World Series starts, said his playoff dominance stems from the knowledge he gained while watching other October legends. I feel like, you know, the guys early on, like a Kurt Schilling and a Josh Beckett, watching those guys perform in the postseason and their track record, um, you know, just seeing how they went about and prepared. They prepared the same way for this start as they would, you know, for a regular start during the season. I will, won't be pulling for him tomorrow, but he's very special. And, you know, I've known his mom and dad for a long time, and he's, 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 he's pretty special. Something else, wouldn't it? it this would, is yeah. really un it is surreal, as you said, to be out here talking about a World Series with the Cubs and yeah. the Indians. Just the matchup alone is really unbelievable. We're going to talk more about Jason Kipnis with you yes. coming up uh, later in the show. Thank you very much, Kelly. Meanwhile, let's get back to the big story. Kyle Schwarber and what is going on. The Schwarber suspense may be dying down just a little bit. Again, we mentioned John Heyman reporting that he's on a plane. He's coming here. He's expected to play. He wasn't here today because he was in the Arizona Fall League playing against the Indians Fall League team, the Surprise Saguaros. Schwarber hit a double in the game, took batting practice, of course. Here's a guy who had five postseason home runs for the Cubs last season. Again, John Heyman says he's expected to play as a DH, and we bring in John Heyman from MLB Network. And, John, really, this story's frankly unbelievable that after, you know, tearing two knee ligaments early in the season, third game of the year, do you think he's really able, going to be able to pull this off? Well, they're going to see. I mean, uh, I was told, barring something unforeseen, he'd have to slip on a ban banana peel heading off of the plane when he gets here. I don't think there'd be any issue. Um, you know, I, I hear a lot of skeptics say that he won't be able to do it. I think he will. They had him see the doctor, a six-month checkup on Monday, last Monday. Checked out fine. I hear he's hitting great. I saw Theo Epstein before. He said he's hitting ropes out there. and. It looks like all systems are go. They're not going to expect him to go out and try and leg out a double, right? They're looking for a guy with a bat. Uh, no, they're not. He, he was not running hard. From what I understand, we had somebody there, Tommy Stokey, from uh, today's knuckleball, was out there watching him. And he said he did slide. He slid into second base, and uh, he came out okay. Uh, was not running at 100%, though, no. But they, they want the bat in the lineup. Cubs offense had two quiet games against the Dodgers, but other than that, boy, they could hit 31 runs in four games. What was working for the offense when they were clicking? Well, they have a great offense. They, they have one of the best lineups in the game. I don't think there's any question about that. The question was, would Russell and Rizzo get going? And they have gotten going. Uh, we haven't seen Hayward yet get going. It's basically been the whole year for him. But uh, other than him, they, their lineup has really been firing for the entire season. Uh, Bryant, the probable MVP, Rizzo, excellent player. They got a great lineup, so it shouldn't be a surprise. Meanwhile, the Indians have been great. They, their uh, pitchers have been limited to great hitting teams. But what about their offense? They've had a week off here. Will it be rested or rusty when we see the Indians in game one tomorrow night? 
I, I think they'll be fine. Uh, they, they do some interesting things. They're a great base running team. They run a little bit and they can bunt a little bit. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Lester. L.A. obviously was not able to do it. My understanding is the goal was and the plan was for them to actually run on him, not just to fake it and, and, and bother him. It was to actually do it. But for whatever reason, they couldn't do it. Lester's obviously quick to home, Ross quick to second or to first, and they just weren't able to do it. I think the Indians will be able to do something if they can get on first base because Lester, one of the best pitchers in baseball, obviously, and one of the best pitchers of all time in the World Series. So many storylines set up, and we haven't even started the World Series. We're looking forward to it. Great job on the Schwarber story. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Much, much more to come here on Sportsnet Central. We're going to have more from Progressive Field. Cubs and Indians less than 24 hours away now as we get ready for Game 1 of the 2016 World Series. When we come back, we'll talk to our Cubs insider Patrick Mooney. We'll get his take on Lester versus Kluber. And we'll hear what he has to say about Kyle Schwarber. All right, Luke, we'll check in with you in just a couple of minutes. Game one starters, John Lester, Corey Kluber, actually faced each other in interleague play last season. Anthony Rizzo delivered a big hit against the Indians ace. But it was his buddy in the Brizzo Souvenir Company, Chris Bryant, who came through with a walk-off winner. We'll take a look down memory lane when Sportsnet Central returns. Pedro Stroh is scoring in home. Sportsnet Central brought to you by Comcast Business. Comcast Business, built for business. Speed always wins, especially in my business. With slow internet from the phone company, you can't keep up. You're stuck watching spinning wheels and progress bars until someone else scoops your story. Switch to Comcast Business with high-speed internet up to 10 gigabits per second. You wouldn't pick a slow race car, then why settle for slow internet? Comcast Business, built for speed, built for business. Want to see how cool I am? Meet my new friends. Happy face, happy face, fist, rainbow. Send. You can't choose how cool your dad is. Check out the selfie I took of you. Dad, that's not a selfie. Yeah, it is. I took it myself. But at least you can yeah, choose two of your favorites from McDonald's McPick 2 menu. Like the new jalapeno McChicken, medium fries, six-piece chicken McNuggets made with all white meat, or a classic double cheeseburger. Choose any two for just $3, only at McDonald's. Why do protein drinks taste chalky, then get worse? Introducing Protein Shots from 5-Hour Energy. Protein Shots from 5-Hour Energy are smooth and tasty and still deliver 21 grams of protein with 100 calories. They're great for workouts. So great that if you don't get up to 15% more reps, more laps, more distance, we'll give you your money back, period. Protein Shots from 5-Hour Energy. Great taste, 100 calories, 21 grams of protein. At Bob Rohrman Lexus of Harlington, the world's largest Lexus dealership, where bigger is really better. I personally invite you to come experience the Arlington Advantage. Over 600 Lexus vehicles available, and our customer service is second to none. Right now, get 0.9% for 72 months on all 2016 Lexus models. The all-new Bob Rohrman Lexus of Arlington on the corner of Route 53 and Dundee Road. Yes, a baseball classic. Jake Taylor and Willie Mays Hayes. You know, Charlie Sheen wanted to toss out the first pitch in the World Series. You remember him, wild thing, tweeting, Major League continues to be the gift that keeps on giving. If called upon, I'd be honored. Well, sorry, Charlie. That honor will go to former Cubs and Indian center fielder Kenny Lofton for game one, Carlos Bayarga in game two. Let's go back to progressive field. Luke standing by with Cubs insider Patrick Mooney. All right, welcome back to Cleveland. We won't see Charlie Sheen pitching in this series. I'm confident of that. We will see Patrick Mooney reporting, and we might see Kyle Schwarber hitting. Will it happen or not? 
mean, at this point, Luke, I think the Cubs have gone so far down this road, there's no turning back. I mean, this is a guy the Cubs have loved from the moment they saw him at Indiana University. They kind of reached for him. At least that was a perception in the draft. They thought he would be this transformative player within their clubhouse. They know he's a special talent, a really unique uh, hitter, and I think it's going to be really tempting for them. They've been you know, in the middle of this historic game six. They're running up into their box to watch on spy cam his <laughs> at-bats in the Arizona Fall League. So you know, this guy's at the front of their mind. I, mean, I asked Jake Arrieta about it. And his face just lit up. He knew what he did in the wild card game last year. Um, and so, yeah, what's already a kind of an epic World Series, you could have this uh, element of surprise. Meanwhile, a great pitching matchup. Kluber against Lester in game one. Uh, Lester's been unbelievable for the Cubs, and Kluber has been even better maybe for the Indians, an ERA below one. Who gets the pitching edge in game one? Yeah, I mean, John Lester got that video when he was a free agent uh, with this narration of the Cubs winning the World Series, you know, what it would be like that Marquee all lit up as World Series champions, and certainly uh, he's done exactly uh, what the Cubs asked. He's been one of the best big game pitchers of his generation, I'm sure. Uh, we'll see that again tomorrow. Uh, Jed Hoyer will probably be sitting here wondering why he traded uh, Corey Kluber, who was really <laughs> under the radar off the grid prospects at the time to the Indians and you normally saw him blossoming uh, the way he did. But it's a terrific pitching matchup. And I think that ultimately, again, you might see this series really swing on the bullpen, which is an amazing strength of this Indians team. There are so many great storylines going into game one. I wish we could talk about all of them, but I know you need to get a warmer jacket because you didn't pack appropriately, Mr. Mooney. Just job. Cleveland is not the fashion mecca that you thought it was if you're in desperate need of uh, winter clothing. Looking for a mall, and it's very unfortunate. Yeah, guys, it's probably going to be pretty chilly throughout this series. Well, back to those Game 1 starters, Lester, Corey Kluber, among the best in all of baseball. They actually faced each other last year in interleague play. Not much history between Kluber and Cub hitters. Last August 24th at Wrigley Field, Anthony Rizzo managed to triple in the seventh inning off the Indians' ace, put the Cubs up 1-0. But Carlos Santana's RBI single with two outs in the ninth spoiled Lester's bid for a complete game shutout. Then in the bottom of the ninth inning, Chris Bryant sent everyone home happy. A walk-off winner off Zach McAllister as the Cubs beat the Indians 2-1. to one. We will forget that celebration. Time for Built for Business. Presented by Comcast Business, we look at the Cubs hitter's very limited experience against Corey Kluber. Rizzo is the only guy with any sort of success against the 2014 AEL Cy Young Award winner. That's Comcast Business, built for business. As you'll recall, Blackhawk stars Jonathan Taves, Duncan Keith, and Brent Seabrook teamed up to sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game during Game 2 of the NLCS. The Hawks have been out front in sharing their support during the Cubs playoff run. But according to former Hawk Christopher Stieg, the captain hasn't always been a diehard Cubs fan. I was always a Cubs fan. Taze was a White Sox fan, so I know how he's probably trying to play it off right now that he is actually cheering. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited about it. As long as Versteeg doesn't do a Cubs rap, we're okay. Well, the three Hawks posed for a picture with the Hawk himself, former National League MVP Andre Dawson, during their visit to Wrigley. And Taves says it's great for the city to watch the Cubs battling it out against the Indians in the World Series. They're going into it, and it seems like they're just playing well at the right time. And um, So it's a lot of fun to watch, and I think uh, great to see the, the buzz and the excitement around the city. And I think those guys are just focusing on their job, and that's the number one thing. We're counting the hours down, just over 24 hours away from the start of Game 1 of the World Series. More coverage from Cleveland after this quick timeout. My whole career, I was pretty much bald, so people just got to know me as being a ball guy. I always wondered what I could do with the balding spot in the crown of my head. There is a method out there to make it look natural. Get your own head of thick, full hair with Restore. The new FUE procedure allows us to gently remove follicles one at a time. There's no cutting, there's no stitches. I had enough of that when I played hockey. You take hair where you got a lot of it and put them into a spot where you don't have a lot of them. Look better and feel better with Restore. Just look at these life-changing, natural, permanent results. Comb it, cut it, style it, it's your hair. You're just one call away from looking and feeling more confident. This is important and it's good for me. I feel better with hair. I owe it all to Restore. 
Call Restore today for your free consultation and get a $500 gift card. It may be the first step that changes your life forever. Call 1-800-712-4545 or visit RestoreHair.com. Call now. This rusty mess isn't going anywhere. Don't trust it to just any cleaner. Trust CLR. CLR makes quick work of the toughest jobs, dissolving crusty white buildup so your shower runs like new. CLR cuts through hard water buildup and helps keep your washer running clean. CLR also earned the EPA Safer Choice Seal, so it's safer for your family. Trust the power of the CLR family and trust your clean to CLR. CLR is available at these fine retailers. Esurance does auto insurance a smarter way. They offer a claim free discount because safe drivers cost less to insure, which saves money. And when they save, you save. That's auto and home insurance for the modern world. Esurance, an Allstate company. Click or call. Esurance does auto insurance a smarter way, like their photo claims tool. It helps settle your claim quickly, which saves time, which saves money. And when they save, you save. That's auto and home insurance for the modern world. Esurance, an Allstate company. Click or call. Welcome back. Indian star second baseman Jason Kipnis actually grew up in Chicago's northern burbs. He told Cleveland.com, quote, the Cubs are part of who I am. The 10-year-old boy in me is saying, why does it have to be the Cubs? I even teared up because I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know what to think. And now I have to go try to disappoint all of them. Well, Jason and Ofer in the World Series would be just fine. Let's head back out to Progressive Field and bring in Kelly Krull with more on the former Glenbrook North High School star. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Mark. Well, the uh, Indian second baseman might have been the most popular player at Media Day this afternoon. The second he sat down, both Chicago reporters and Cleveland reporters completely bombarded him. But he was very jovial, very charismatic, and uh, had a lot of nice things to say about Chicago. Although he did say that curse, he no part of him in his body wants it to end right now. But he was very gracious towards what this Cubs team has accomplished so far this season it was weird because I mean it's uh, all I was seeing um, were like I said on social media and among my friends from home it's just nothing but Cubs posts so I mean it's <laughs> you're happy for um, all the friends and family back home who are rooting for the Cubs and it's cool to see the, I know the history of the team and um, and I said like I said it was just a I didn't know how to really handle it I couldn't tell if I was happy sad mad what it just but it was I was emotional and I was just choked up and I was just like oh no what, is, what does this mean right now but it's gonna be it's nothing more than excitement for the games it's more fun than weird it's not weird it's that's all it's, it's a unbelievable opportunity and dream to go play World Series versus the Cubs um, and Wrigley and have basically all my friends and family there so it's, it's special he went on to say they aren't the lovable losers anymore of course he always dreamed of playing a World Series for the Cubs at Wrigley Field he will get to live out half that dream, right, Mark? Because he will get in, will get to play in the World Series. It just won't be for the Cubs. And while he's happy for his friends and families who, who have always been Cubs fans, he said they might be the only ones in the stadium that are cheering me on a few nights from now. He says he expects to get quite a few boos from the Wrigley crowd. So certainly uh, very gracious with the media this afternoon, having a lot of fun with it. All right, Kelly, thanks a lot. Hopefully the fans won't boo because Jason might tear up again. You know, it's an emotional moment for him. Yeah. We'll see you a little bit later. Don't forget, much more coverage coming up on the Cubs-Indians World Series matchup. That'll be right around 10.30 on Cubs Playoff Central following Blackhawks postgame live. So make your plans to join us. We're coming right back with more Sportsnet Center. All right, that's our team. I spent my life planting a size 6 non-slip shoe into that door. On this side, I want my customers to relax and enjoy themselves. But these days, it's phones before forks. They want Wi-Fi out here. But behind that door, I need a private connection for my business. Wi-Fi Pro from Comcast Business. Public Wi-Fi for your customers, private Wi-Fi for your business. Strong and secure. Good for a door and a network. Comcast Business. Built for security. Built for business. The hockey season is underway, and here's the team putting it on the line for you. The Koalas Auto Group. The best you can get. Drive in style in this Lexus ES for only $329 a month. Turn driving into pure excitement in this new Toyota Camry for only $189 per month. 
Turn heads in this sophisticated Lexus RX for $419 per month. Plus, we offer 0% APR financing. A winning season with a championship team, the Koalas Auto Group. Now playing on DirecTV Cinema before it's available on Netflix or Redbox. You knew me back in high school as... Whoa, 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 whoa! No. Fat Robbie. What? Spoiler alert, I'm in the CIA. Yeah. Oh. Did you see that? I did the same! Oh. Yeah. yeah! Central Intelligence. Movie start at Channel 125. I think I know what it's time for. <laughs> if your family is complete, the safest and most effective form of birth control is a vasectomy. Call today for a same-day consultation and procedure in one of our three state-of-the-art facilities. Daddy, how are babies made? I can tell you how they're not made. <laughs> Advanced Urology Associates. Safe, simple, and effective. We are back with the Sports Bet Central injury alert. Jay Cutler has been cleared to return to practice, and he will get the start for next Monday night's home game against the Minnesota Vikings. Cutler, as you know, has been out since week two after suffering sprained ligaments in his right thumb. He will take over the starting spot for Brian Hoyer, who went on injured reserve today after breaking his left arm in that loss to the Packers. And finally, how about this shot? Cubs fans united. Egypt, China, New Zealand, all over the world, Cub fans are celebrating the team's trip to the World Series. Yes, they are all flying the W. That is so much fun to see. That is all the time we have. Thank you so much for watching Sportsnet Central, presented by Comcast Business. Up next, we'll get you out to the United Center for Blackhawks pregame live with Pat Boyle, Steve Conroy, and Jamal Mayers. And then Pat Foley and Eddie Olchick have the call of the Hawks' flames at 7.30. Enjoy your night of Blackhawks hockey here on CSN.